Well, I welcome you back to the big story for today. And we're looking at um, insecurity and how it has led to the closure of about 723 schools across, across the country and how that might likely increase to the number of over 20.5 million out-of-school children that are presently in the country. And many are saying it's just a time bomb waiting to explode. But anyway, no explosion on it. But we're redirecting the questions still to our guest here, Mr. Wilson Egboje. You see, to understand that the problem seems to be growing by the day and we're talking about the number of out-of-school children that seems to be with 723 schools closed in the last couple of years, you would understand that is indeed a problem that is waiting to explode. But anyway, we'll wait no further, but rather continue on what we're talking about today. And uh, I still have my guests uh, with us in the sh on the show, and we're talking of no other person, but Mr. Wilson Boje. Before we went on the break, we looked extensively at that very report coming from UNICEF and how really damning it is, and how should really uh, con how we should really be concerned about that very report indicating. Uh, the huge number of schools being closed and funny being occupied by non-state actors and non-state actors we mean terrorists kidnappers and bandits and how they are right there in those premises wrecking more havoc on uh, the good people of the country but should the government not take the bull by the horn is it a lack of political will or is now just like our guest said more of a business well anyway we'll still continue with the business of the day and uh, let, let's continue on that and uh, look at it now yes the problem is there Let's look at efforts being taken by the federal government before now. I could still remember in 2024, the Nigerian government and the United Nations Special Envoy for Global Education, Gordon Brown, okay. former UK um, Prime Minister, um, initiated something. They themselves and coalition of business, uh, major business players in the country, initiated uh, the Safe School Initiative Program uh, for better protection of our schools, after that infamous Chibok girls adoption. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could still remember in 2024, all of that came out of all of those that played out. And not, not only that, I could still remember in August of last year, the federal government, I'm talking about this administration, also had to put in almost 145 billion Naira for also the Safe School Initiative Program, all in the bid to deal with insecurity and curb the dropping numbers of children that were going to school. But my question is, why did all of this still not further improve how safe these schools are, but rather we're seeing a negative trend instead? Uh, yeah, I, I think the, what, what we should look at, what we should examine now to understand. Hmm. The lack of uh, positive results. We don't have positive results coming from this. Coming from it. Now, who or which agency has been Saddle. delegated? Okay, Saddle with the responsibility. Yeah, to monitor mm. the effectiveness mm. of the measures that have been taken. Because we, we're not talking. We are not talking about uh, uh, non-Nigerians getting involved in this. Because the whole issue is very concerning. Are you, if you want to know more, you, you have to go deeper mm. into the process of implementation. Process of implementation. Yeah, you have, to, you, have to, you have to find out how much of the planned effort, because this, this was not done by Nigerians, how much of the planned effort by foreigners mm. who are concerned about what is going on here mm. has been imp implemented. How much was budgeted? Mm. And how much of the uh, budgeted fund funds is accounted for? Okay. What measures were taken? Mm. It's not enough to just say uh, the 10 billion has been projected for that. How many schools do we have in Nigeria? What efforts have been taken? And how, I mean, how, 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 how have much been of that money and was channeled deep into resolving Fine, the fine. That is it. We, we are a very corrupt country. You will not just, by the time you go deeper into um, the, 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 the financial, uh, 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 that is, Daily. output, mm. Mm? Mm. the financial output, how much was actually implemented, which security uh, agencies were involved, how, how much mm. of the effort put in yeah. cannot be quantified in relation to the results that we now the see. Outcome, yeah. yes, the, 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 yes, the outcome. 
You, these are issues that we have to look into. You will discover that at the end of the day, 80% of the budget, of the amount projected, went into rat holes. <laughs> it's in some people's pockets. 80%? 80%. Maybe they just spent about 20%. So, so you feel that's why we've not really had any major no impact? No impact. No impact. Because if you are, if you are really uh, uh, you know, adopting measures to keep the schools safe, you have to employ special personnel and pay them. The rate may not be as high as that of the security uh, agencies that we have in the country, but it should be something that will be satisfactory to those who are in it. Because if you have the personnel in the place, and the criminals know that, look, there are people in that place who are taking charge mm -hmm. of security measures in the area, yeah. it's a deterrent. But when you make it an open system, nothing is going on. Nothing is going on there. You go in, they walk in. I can say seven hundred and twenty something schools be uh, be closed because there are no there are no people uh, adopting measures to ensure that the schools are kept safe, secure. So the people just walk in, have a free 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 day, free operations, mm -hmm. and then uh, after and that, which take, children they want to ah, and they want want to take they take them away. It, it's painful, my brother. It's painful to hear that somebody little children who went to school were adopted and parents had to gather money to pay to get, to get their own children back. Oh, okay now yeah yeah it's it's quite a painful one and it's something that's even far more disturbing. Um when I looked at that report is the issue of it now crippling into the south. Um according to that report like I said 62 schools were closed in Imo state and just last week we had people from Ekiti school mm. being kidnapped with their teachers and the driver was killed on account of not having anybody to bail him out and were not only killed in front of the children but was even set ablaze and burnt to ashes as more of what will come if these children parents did not do the needful. Now my concern is now, yes you said it in our initial half of the discussion that the present problem we're having now is as a direct result of the out-of-school children mm. that were put out of just 10.5 million in 2024, which was 10 years ago. Just 10.5. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 2014, 20, rather, 20, which was 10 years ago. Mm. So the problem we're now having is that, for the end of that, just number of out-of-school children that is now transcending into what we are being faced with today. But my question now is, let's look at the impact of having more out-of-school children growing in the South and the likely impact that we won't have on all of us. Yeah, you know, I mentioned earlier that... Uh, oh, they might have alternative. That I agree. Mm -hmm. They might have private schools to put them into. But irrespective, the fear being expressed by many parents of, will my child go to school and not come back? It's a terrible thing. Would that not change the mentality of the parents? And are we not likely going to see an increase of out-of-school children in the South, knowing that even this major way they say it, school now scam, mm. is now becoming the order of the day? Mm. So what likely impact would if we still have a generation of those scared of scheduling their children to school, a generation that feels school is a scam, and a generation that are dropping out of school on account of all of this? Impact it will have in the South in the likely years. Yeah, yeah. the ripple effect is ahead for us whether we like it or not. But but we, 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 play, we played it with kid gloves mm -hmm. in the north. Mm -hmm. Now it has come round to haunt us. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So should we now do the same with the south? We must not allow it. The southern uh, governors must come together, put heads together, and check this menace. When Gulag Jonathan was in office, in Abia State, students were taking a hostage, hmm. and the president moved. He deployed men. Governor also stood his ground, deployed men, soldiers, and policemen. And the boys were, 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 were set free. Yeah, of course. No ransom was paid. Of course. But we're not hearing a case of a kitty. 
the home of education in Nigeria. Yes. That la makes large it more, la have the largest number of uh, professors in Nigeria. More painful. That makes it more painful that this kind of discouragement is moving into a community like that. If the federal government can't take any measures to ensure that it is nipped in the bud, then there's going to be a terrible problem some 10, 15 years from now in the South. In the South. The question I ask is, are the perpetrators of these heinous crimes ghosts? Are they not well, human of course beings? Not. Mm. If you have a problem that is intractable, that is difficult to manage, you have to adopt measures that are commensurate with efforts to bring down this problem that has become a plague. Head on. Head on. For yeah. instance, why can't the Nigerian government decide that, look, we are going to hunt down these people with helicopters. You hear there is a case of kidnapping in a particular place. Mm. The report gets to security agencies mm. within uh, 30 minutes. Mm. And they're talking about forests. Which forests? Which forests? Is it not trees? Can't we use defoliants? Get helicopters? gas the whole forest and let the place be open so that the rats that are running can be can be seen it's not that way they are not hiding in agricultural ground, uh, agricultural farms or agricultural settlements they are hiding in thick forests and what makes it really bad is this i did a study some time ago and i found out that some visa forest is bigger than all the southeast states combined some Bisa forest in Borono State is bigger than all the southeastern states, the Igbo speaking states combined. combined. They are not even up to half of some Bisa forest. Why should that forest be left as it is? That means a whole vast area that can accommodate several institutions of learning, several factories. Several production, uh, industrial production uh, est uh, uh, co uh, establishments is left to as a forest. Why would we not encourage people who want to do terrible things to make it their base? These are issues that the government must look into. You find ways of ensuring that these hideouts mm -hmm. cease to be hideouts. Our government is not planning. Because when the money comes, people think of how they will share it and put it into their pockets. So, it is a problem that will continue unless we have a government that has the political will to say, look, something has to be done. Take, for instance, the mafia ran America for a very long time. Yes, they did. They controlled business. Even up to now, they control business. Of course. But... With the new generation of businessmen that we have, who are engineers, and they have been able to know, you know, forge methods that can keep the mafia <coughs> out of it. Out of it. Mm -hmm. they, are the they are the rich men that we have today. Yeah. The mafia were the richest men in America 50, 60 years ago. But today, Nobody hears about them. They are now treated as uh, underground racketeers. Miscrimes. Yeah, miscrimes. Even though they have a lot of money, they now know that they have a position in the society that is derided, that nobody really wants to associate, uh, with. Yeah, associate with. You understand what I'm saying? So these are the things that the Nigerian government must try to do. They know the people who are behind these people. They don't want to do it. Look at the population. 25 million people, 25 million children out of school. How many countries have population that is up to 25 million mm. in, in Africa? Mm. South Africa that has the biggest economy. The, the, the still say Nigeria has the biggest economy, but we know that Nigeria, uh, Nigeria doesn't have the biggest economy in Africa at the moment. South Africa has taken back its position. The population of South Africa is barely 24 million. That is to say, if you, dis if you say, okay, South Africa, all, all, go to Europe, 
How many countries in Europe have population that is up to 20 million? The Scandinavian countries combined, you will find that their population is barely the same thing with uh, the number of out-of-school children in Nigeria. It's a disaster that is waiting to happen. In uh, that combined Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger Republic, Republic of Benin, combine all of them, the population of those countries is not up to the population of out of school children in Nigeria. You have a population of 200 and something million. You are not planning to make any efforts to ensure that these people, these young citizens become useful in the next 20, 30 years. If they cannot be useful in the next 20, uh, 30 years, they are going to be a problem to the system. We have, we have not seen anything. It is sad that we don't have leaders who are interested in building the future. They are only interested in what they will put in their pockets. See, Papa Awolo, he said, the people you don't train today, we hunt your children tomorrow. They can be sending their children abroad. Yes, you have heard of uh, political leaders in the north who are no longer going to their hometown because the, the boys are waiting for them. How long are they going to stay here? Those who send their children outside, good. In the next 10, 20 years, they will not be able to return. Even now, people are afraid to come home because they say, I don't want to be kidnapped when I go home. What do you think with 25 million out of school children today? What do you think would be the situation some 10, 15 years from now? The government, in fact, the certain governors have to put heads together and stop this menace. If they don't stop it, I, anyway, I trust that in the West, they are going to start uh, thinking of uh, another way of handling Please. this situation. In the East, they are going to start thinking of another way to handle this situation. Ultimately, the state police will be the final solution Arbiter. to this problem. Otherwise, this system that is so corrupt from the top at the federal level and at the state level, they cannot manage it, they cannot challenge them. It, we, 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 are, then we are headed for disaster. Something has to be done to make these people know that they cannot continue to flourish in a country where there is sanity. And our leaders must live up to expectation. Otherwise, we can come when we choose who should be their leader and who should not be their leader with right thinking minds. But then I, I'll need to choose this, and that's we need to go on the break. Yeah, yeah, please just hold on. Let's go on a break and when we come back we'll continue our discussion centered on that, that very report being released by UNICEF indicating that 723 schools have been closed in the last couple of years and not only that, the number of adult school children are expected to grow. Go where? Or grow to hot us? Well, just a question. Let's go on a break. <laughs>